Um, I'm not going to test this until we've we've done all these. And hopefully it'll boost my chances. I do have a skill point that I can spend at some point. I think I've just leveled up. Haven't I? Have I have I leveled up? I have a skill point to spend. We'll see if we need it in a in a, a really important test. Which was this one? This one is Inland Empire. This is my hunch. Hmm. 72% is good. But it's not brilliant. You got a free 250 gig SSD? How did you get that for free? Oh, nice, nice phone. Um, nice birthday present. Okay, let's do the external examination. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copier paper tries to answer why. Clothes, he begins. The deceased wears armoured boots and white briefs. The maker of the briefs is Babru Dean, I think. Let's see. He turns the body onto its side to check the underwear label. See, it's happening. Babra Dean, yes. Inexpensive, size M. Colour, white. The disappointment is palpable. palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. She wanted to see the pants come off. Write it down. The rest of the clothes have been removed post-mortem by scavengers. In order to get to the victim's ceramic armour, officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire, if you are to keep them for yourself. As you ought to, you've deserved them more than anyone else. Uh, write it down. I'm going to write the boots down. I don't want a pair of ceramic boots off the corpse, not really. The boot has a serial number. You twist the dead man's foot. It's whatever. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposely concealed by the design. Write it down. Tattoos. He stands up, feet planted on either side of the body. The upper torso is covered in a single continuous tattoo resembling a national pattern. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a colour photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a Trigat Mini. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Colour, yellow, Length 3 metres. There's a buckle on the other end. He produces a measuring tape. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 metres. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Excuse me. Uh, body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. He kneels in to get a better look. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back short. Might be more consistent with someone of 50. Touch the corpse's hair before moving on. Touch it? Touch it. Do it. His hair feels wet, soaked with rain, cold to touch. Not that different from a living person after a swim. Stroke his hair gently. That's getting creepy. No. Write it down. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Yes, Kuno. We know who that was. You got almost all your stuff for free? Had to only add your graphics card and a bigger hard disk? Oh, nice. That is nice. It's nice to get stuff for free. Free stuff is best stuff. Kuno. Effie low velocity, chink chonk. The kid explodes. You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was effing max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. The lieutenant pays no heed. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp and chest, consistent with predation. Not write down what I meant for high velocity. Should I put it please Kuno? Kuno doesn't get to see this. Just write down. Ligature mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. With the other hand pulling on the belt, he starts cutting into the, the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring, he concedes, breathless. There's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. I've got bolt cutters. You got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Oh, yeah, I'm prepared. Um, good thing we got these chain cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now, he points to the rope squeezing the dead man's neck. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, 
with as much precision as you can. See, my pig is going to F his head off. No, he ain't. C looks blasé. Your pig's boring. I'm not Kuno's pig. Uh, look for a good spot to cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the yeast. This sounds disgusting. That's bad. Okay, did that improve? 58%. I might fail this. Yes, I'm Kuno's pig. I agree. You are, he says with calm certainty. This pig is Kuno's. 72% agreement with Kuno. Physical instrument for... Let's try it. Let's try it at that point. Success. After some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot, tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Press down. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The lieutenant kneels closer, running his finger along the dark red groove until there's a gap. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. As it ought to, this is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest pulling up. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from one or one and a half metres. Write it down. This is a damn in-depth autopsy, folks. I mean, it really is. The game could have said, you decide the following from, from what you find on the corpse and then just list some stuff. But no, it was going through it the long way, apparently. Chest is intact. He presses down on it. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia. He pulls down the man's underpants. I thought someone, one of these two, was going to take a look at this. Now it's going to happen, see? I knew it. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Inspect the genitals. The dead man's penis is average size, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. Write it down and move on. That's the bit where you get your biro out and you just lift it up to make sure there's no evidence hanging underneath. Put it back down. But in that case, I'd probably use the lieutenant's biro rather than my own. <laughs> Back is symmetrical and intact. He struggles to turn the corpse on his side. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh and hip. Recent ones? In addition, I see smaller residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, Dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. The scarring is extensive, way more than a law official's. Hmm, he nods. We have a real museum here of battles, wars. So the guys inside, the Union guys, were right. This was a combatant. Last item, hands. He takes a man's right hand in his, inspects it, then moves on to the other hand. Pick up the hand. The hand is surprisingly heavy to lift, filled with decay liquids. Feels as though it could explode if squeezed harder. You're suddenly repulsed, so much so you feel compelled to drop it. Hands are clean, the lieutenant says, as five cold, sausage-like fingers slip from your hand. No sign of injury from struggling. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, the stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Ooh, he turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. He burrows his face in the sleeve of his jacket. You hear a muffled voice. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Um, this is going up. Oh, no, it's was at 72%, wasn't it? Hmm. Internal examination. Summary. Hopefully this is going to be quicker than that. I, I seriously hope. Is Call of Duty World War II a good game? You can't afford Call of Duty games, but I was gifted a copy for Steam as a birthday gift from an Aussie streamer. Great guy. Uh, nice. Very nice of them. Um, it's... I haven't played it. I've watched a little bit of it. It feels very 
forced and contrived. Um, so I wasn't a huge fan of what it looked like. It looked a bit disappointing. If you go back in time a bit further, you would I think it's Call of Duty War in the Pacific. That's a Call of Duty game, right? That's a World War II one. Uh, and that's supposed to be pretty good. So I think the older ones are probably better. But um, that's, that's just what I think. I don't actually know because I haven't played those older ones. But if I was to buy and play a Call of Duty game, it would be the older stuff. Right. I need to prepare. I need to prepare for this again. Man, this game. Central nervous system, he says, and then concludes abruptly. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? He's asking me. Really? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it, a moral to this story. Um, if I may add the moral of this story, what would that be? He looks at you inquisitively. The dead man looks too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of this story. The brain is very vulnerable to compromise in its blood supply. The lieutenant grins. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. All right, not applicable. <laughs> Good. Uh, musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. He gets close to the mouth hole, his eyes squinting from the stench. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid, bo hyoid bone. I don't know what that means. Let's see. Um, eyes and tongue bulging out. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant put his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that effer off. The hyoid bone is fractured, he says after a while. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact, unremarkable. I think the hyoid bone, I don't know which it is, but isn't that the one that they use to tell whether someone was, um, was, was died by hanging or if that was... Or whether it was that was fractured by strangulation. I think there's a difference before they were hung. Because remember, there was a guy who hung himself in prison, and that was uh, debatable. That um, child sex trafficker in America. I think that's what I think that's what they're talking about. This hyoid bone, and that's why it's relevant in this. I, I think the game developers have probably done their research on this, which is a pretty grim subject to research. Uh, back hunched, as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. Oh, back hunched, Kim, as if in prayer. He begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. I thought it meant this corpse was back hunched. Respiratory system. He stopped to exert more force. Both hands are used. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received dental implants, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucus of the lips and mouth. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream, no sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there, sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. Look deeper inside. Ooh. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat, a contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow just to keep looking. Heal. <laughs> inside, you see darkness, just a mess of meat and darkness. But I thought there might have been a clue in the back there. Uh, mute silence, as always. The lieutenant lets go of the jaws. The mouth snaps shut before you. Hemorrhaging present in mucus, he repeats impatiently. Write it down. He wipes his brow. Hepatobiliary? Not applicable. Hepa hepatobiliary? Any, any doctors in the house? Why? Don't we have anything? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. Are you a... Uh, Hepatobiliary expert? I don't even know what it means. I had to pronounce it, mate. So, I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it? That's it. Right, not applicable. <laughs> Same for toxicology and serology. Both. Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there, the completionist in, in, completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. Like a toxicology screening? He looks at the monster. At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything, even if he was brimming with cocaine. But still... You should add a request. Success. Hmm. Brimming with the cocaine. Oh, that's my uh, my drug addiction talking to me. Write NA and add toxicology requested. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood is gathered in the hands, feet and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with a hanging. 
Gastrointense... Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground. Pool of feces there. Then he touches the corpse, bloated lower abdomen briefly and says, digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. Write it down. Keep the voila. <laughs> Gotta put that in. Any doctor in chat? Points at the doctor in chat. You're a nerd. Um, one who knows one. According to Google, it has to do with the liver, bile ducts, etc. Oh, okay. Cheers. That's clearly something... I know nothing about it. I've never come across that word before. I've watched a few, um, like CSI's, crime dramas, and, uh, and other thrillers and stuff, and never heard that mentioned. We're only up to 72%. Let's do description of injuries summary. I wish I could... Sa Can I save it here? No. Let's see. He tilts his head. We have bite marks, contusions on head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. Bite marks. He nods. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Beneath the description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Um, oh, okay. So this was this was predation by birds. These are the bite marks. Non-fatal post-mortem. Agreed. Next entry. Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity. <laughs> has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non-fatal, post-mortem. Right, next... Ligature mark. Finish the or Oh, what's the fourth injury field for? Nothing, just in case. Ligature mark? A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, 7 centimetres. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, 1 centimetre. No signs of clawing on the neck. So he hasn't tried to, like, pull it off. He hasn't tried to... I don't know if his hands were tied up. He hasn't tried to free his neck. The, the, the spine wasn't broken, look. Um, the cervical column in, was intact. The hyoid bone is fractured. So it's not like being hung from the tree has snapped his neck and he's instantly just been paralysed, dead, couldn't do it. I wonder if he's been killed and then hung up here because there's no clawing signs. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. You watch uh, House MD for medical shows. It's like 70% of the cases can be solved if they just get the medical history of the what? The imp? Of oh, the patient. Okay. Oh, 2 a.m. for you? Okay, good night, uh, Ragnus. And I'm glad you had a good birthday. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side, awaiting your judgment. The ring is around his neck, is visible. <sighs> Fatal injury. Do you think that's what killed him? I think this is probably what's killed him. There's no claw marks, though, but uh, I don't know. That's it. He cracks an uneasy smile. We've established cause of death. It's not much, and it leaves much to be questioned, but it's a start. Excellent. That's a field autopsy. He produces a small black plastic roll from his jacket and body bag. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. First, how did it go? Well, we established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. We also requested a toxicological screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks. If we're lucky, I would not hold my breath. What else? Oh, extra XP. Nice. We were thorough with the list of injuries too. We described them all in detail. What's there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Like we do any other type around here. Oh yeah, well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order. Um, perhaps a drink is in order. Later, I mean. Now, you see, that worries me. He wipes his forehead. You will die if you drink. You know that, don't you? You're proving a useful detective. The organisation would miss you. 
Yes, I, I do look like a uh, late-stage alcoholic. What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form, then I will drive him to Faubourg. Rip out a copy of the autopsy pages. New task, send the victim's body for processing. He looks at the dead man one more time, then at the slip of red paper in his hand, then at the corpse again. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. I can do this. Tell me. Tell me who you are, dead man. Search the body one more time, thoroughly. It's a 3% check. Minus one, established a probable cause. That doesn't look good. Try to remove the dead man's boots. I thought we decided to leave it to processing. The lieutenant shakes his head. Let's not turn this into some kind of circus. We did decide to do that. Let's try this. 83%. Come on. Roll it, baby. Yes. Success. A hanged man. I'm gone. <laughs> I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Where have you gone? Into the wild pearl yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. There's nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A killer. Half light takes one to no one. I have another question for you. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your black frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Go ahead, ask me more questions. You love questions. Why do I love questions? Because you're a copper Rooney. Look at all of them go. Did you want more questions? Yeah, give me questions. Uh, why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? Me? A child born with Moller's disease, harlequinism, grown up miraculously. Um, a baby affected with harlequinism. You sure wriggled out of that one, Coppolini. Enough. Did that help? That didn't help. Tell me something, dead man. Is my name Rooney? Rooney is not who I am. I'm Harry. Okay, that didn't help. This is going to be... Perception legendary. I've got a 3% chance. I don't think there's anything I can do. I can boost perception. I can boost perception. Skills. I don't know that I want to... That's not skills. I don't know that I want to boost perception necessarily. What's it under? Um, visual calculus. Perception. I've got nothing in it. Leveling up for this role sounds highly illogical. Let's let's do it anyway. Perception is never a bad thing to have something of. So. Okay. What difference did that make? It got me 5%. If it works, I will be amazed. Oh, that was dangerous. And that was failure. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso, with his swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. I'm, I'm not dying at this point. Uh, look in his pants again. The genitals in his breeches continue, continue to be unnoteworthy. You see the penis of a dead man. If you've seen it once, you've already got the picture. <laughs> you can't get enough of that dick. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Yes, there's something we're not seeing. Okay, well, we're in uh, Liva Mortis here. He's disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination, and we need to do it fast. Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? It would have to be industrial in size. Let's start by asking Garte about the whirling in rags and the Fritz store down at the gates. If they don't know, his voice trails off and his gaze settles on Kuno, but only if all else fails. Uh, what the F are you looking at, Ping Pong Man? You want a piece of the Kuno? Only if all else fails, he stresses. 
Uh, let's hurry then. Fridge the victim's body. Okay, so we're not getting rid of it just yet. This is this is quite good. He gets up. This is one task we cannot sideline. With every hour, whatever we're looking for will become harder to find. Right then. We run. We need some good stuff there, I think. I have to be careful about my morale here. Either that or I do nothing until the next day, which is also a possibility. Oh, go and ask this guy here. Don't be afraid to see weird things. People are more forgiving to persons of power, like police officers. I like throwing weird things into this. We need to talk to them, but that's not the case right now. So, do you have a... That should be a walk-in refrigerator. That should be. Can I help you? Um, about my bill for tonight. I have this giant novelty check. You must be kidding, right? He stares at the large novelty check, baffled. Yeah, good one, officer. Real funny. But this establishment only takes cash. Now, do you have that cash, Mr. Novelty Check Man? Uh, fritter near the gates. So the tenant sounds tired. They'll exchange it. Oh, good. Uh, not yet, in that case. I seem to be in need of a fridge. Yes, yes, for the dead body. You want to put a dead corpse into my fridge, right? Correct him. Uh, we want to put a very important dead body into your fridge. I don't care. You're not putting a dead body into my fridge. Why? Because this is a culinary establishment, not a morgue. I can't believe you even asked me. It would only be for a lieutenant. You too? He can't believe it. You're asking too? The answer is no. I will not turn this place into some kind of macabre circus. He sighs. Let's go talk to the Frit Clark. Okay. I didn't think he was going to give us anything. As I sprint there. We could always fill a bathtub up with ice. If we could get ice from somewhere. That would kind of work. We don't know of any industrial fridges, do we? Unless they have a like a refrigerated shipping container. That's the only other thing I can think of. Oh, let's go over to this first and just get some cash. Insert your bottles. I got 120 for all that rubbish. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. She returns to a magazine. What's that magazine she's reading? What's that magazine you're you reading? Mean this. She looks at the cover, boasting a colour photo of two girls. Two girls kissing. Ooh. This is pop stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. Oh. Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode featured on page 34. This speaks to you. I approve of this. Very futuristic. Tap on the girls kissing. She pops her raspberry flavoured bubblegum and nods. Her shoulders tense. She shuffles back only slightly. Bewilderment and repulsion root <laughs> in place. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the deck with an apologetic... Sorry, before returning to the clerk with an apologetic half-smile. Before we go on, I what is know. this frit? Frit? Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. The story goes that normal Frit with two T's, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Frit Retail Inc. grew into multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. Interesting um, stuff. Okay, I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Okay, give it a novelty check. Uh, for 25 real. Wow, didn't know you worked for the union, sir. She rolls up the giant novelty check. Looks like it's seen, she's seen it before and slips it under the counter. Anything else I can do for you? No, you don't work for the union. The union works for you by supplying you with cash. Uh, blow the whole thing on speed and gin right now. Speed and gin. Great combo. Ask some local dealers, maybe. Uh, does Frit have a warehouse in the back of the whirling rags? A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what Frit does. Come on, this is important. She scrunches up her face into an expression of consummate adolescent scepticism. Fine, Frit doesn't have a warehouse, just a little back room here. Okay, she turns back to her magazine without waiting for you to respond. Uh, do you have a fridge? Mm, right behind you, she nods towards the buzzing machine in the corner. I don't think that fridge is going to do the job. I need to store a corpse there. Uh, she keeps chewing on gum. You're joking, right? 
Measure the fridge with your fingers what I closed. Never mind, it would never fit. Yeah, super funny. She turns to a magazine, seemingly not impressed by the joke. Um, can you tell me anything about the dead body? I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Did you know the man who died? No. Not really. Oh, not really? Uh, no, I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't really know. Thank you for your help. Can you tell me anything about this reality that we're in? Reality? You mean, what reality? Economic reality? Or... She's like a student, unexpectedly called upon by a teacher. Can she answer the classroom question? Uh, yes, tell me about the economic reality. I don't really know anything. I mean, I'm 15. What about the physical reality then? I don't know. What about it? The coalition. What's that? Our government? And the revolution? When ordinary people take over the government and demand democracy? What about the one we had in Rivashol? Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago, so sorry, I'm not very good at this history, I mean. What time is 